Hello everyone, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Today I have come up with a very useful video which is on commonly used Lean Six Sigma tools. So let's begin. What are these Lean Six Sigma quality tools? So these tools, they can help in resolving business issues through data collection and analysis, root cause identification, identifying the solutions through data and process approach, and controlling the improved state. So some of these Lean Six Sigma quality tools are, first one is cause and effect diagram, which is also known as fishbone diagram, very commonly used tool. Second one is a Pareto chart. Third one is a YY analysis. Fourth is 5S. Fifth is a value stream mapping. Sixth is regression analysis. And seventh is FMEA, which is also known as failure mode and effect analysis. The first one is cause and effect diagram. So it is also known as fishbone diagram and it helps you identify many possible causes for an effect or a problem. It looks like a fish and a bone and that is why it is known as fishbone diagram. The head of the fish contains the effect or the problem. Then we have six subheads in which the fishbone diagram is divided. The first one is called manpower which is also known as people. The second one is machine. Third one is material. Fourth is method. Fifth is measurement. And sixth is mother nature. So let us take one example to understand how a fishbone diagram is used. Suppose late to office is the problem statement. People are coming late to office and somebody is trying to identify the real root causes of why people come late to office. So some of the very commonly said things are there are there is a traffic jam due to rain. It will become part of the mother nature. Alarm clock time is incorrect, which the person has set up, is a measurement problem. They miss setting the alarm or a wrong route was taken when they were coming to office is a method problem. There could be a pool partner delay or a cab driver was told wrong pickup time was all related to manpower. Tire puncture or a car broke down under machine. And under material, Somebody has drank cough syrup by mistake, so he has overslept, could be a material problem. So, this is how you can identify the root causes to a particular problem. The next tool is a Pareto chart. Pareto chart works on 80-20 rule. It says that roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So Pareto chart can help Six Sigma professionals to identify top 20% of the causes. And it is also a tool which is used for pictorial representation of discrete data. This is how a Pareto chart looks like. It helps you identify those 20% causes which are causing 80% or more problem. Let us go to Minitab and understand how a Pareto chart can be created. So I have data in column C4 and C5 which says the type of errors that the team is making and C5 says the count of errors. And the path is stat quality tools Pareto chart. Under defects or attribute data, we will enter error types. And in frequencies, we will enter count. And we will click OK. So this is the kind of Pareto chart that you have seen in my PPT. So the same has been created in Minitab. You can see top 80% contribution is because of the address, punctuation and spelling mistakes. The next tool is YY analysis. So how to identify a root cause to a particular problem. This tool can help you identify. Suppose you were caught speeding. The question that the person is asking you, why were you caught speeding? Because I was late for work. So why were you late for work? Because I got up late. Why you got up late? Because my alarm clock did not work. And why it did not work? 
because batteries were flat and why because I forgot to replace them so the real root cause is get an alarm clock that plugs into the mains or even replace the batteries at set intervals before they run out so this is the real root cause rather than finding out solutions at the first or the second root cause find out solution where it is actionable moving on the next tool that we are going to learn is 5s 5s refers to five japanese terms and they are translated in english as sort set in order shine standardize and sustain let us take an example where the 5s can be implemented so one of the implementations of 5s was to reduce the number of servers that were required in it so the first step was sorting out data so on each of the server the storage space was used by different departments and it was audited and those databases which were not utilized for the last two or more years were removed so sorting was done and the second step was to arrange databases in order of their priority and the third step was to shine all the teams were asked to clean their databases all the non relevant information was removed from the databases and their sizes were reduced the fourth step was to standardize this process they standardized the process of adding a new database to a server and consolidated the databases to release 13 servers out of 67 and how did this sustain an automatic email generation when the server utilization goes below 75 percent this will trigger the consolidation process of the servers so overall this process was very helpful in releasing 13 servers this is a 5s implementation so moving on to the next important lean six sigma quality tool is a value stream mapping so value stream mapping it helps you identify three things the first is value enabling activities these are the activities which when enabled help add value to the process the second type of activities are value adding activities these are the activities that add value to your process directly and the third one are non value added activities these are the activities that do not add any value to the process so in order to make the process more compact swift and precise you must eliminate the wait time between the consecutive steps and you must also eliminate all your non value activities and steps this is how a value stream map looks like you identify the process steps then you identify the cycle time and wait time of these particular process steps there is a formula to calculate wait time which is cycle time multiplied by inventory plus observed wait time for example the cycle time of process step number one was 12 the inventory of the process was 3 so the wait time is cycle time which is 12 into 3 which is 36 plus the observed wait time which is 10 minutes which was observed over and above these wait times so in, it includes those 10 minutes and it becomes 46 minutes for this particular process step so if you define all these cycle times wait times inventory and everything in the process and list it like this it becomes a value stream map so you have to eliminate all the non value added steps and the wait time between these steps which is 46 minutes in step 1 23 minutes in step 2 19 minutes 102 minutes and 3 minutes respectively in the further steps so once you eliminate all of this your process is smooth taking less time much more efficient and lean the next quality tool is regression analysis regression analysis it is a statistical method that helps in determining the extent to which the relationship exists between two variables out of these two variables one variable is dependent variable and the other one is independent variable for example call time in a call center is a dependent variable which is dependent on the hold time of the call more you hold the call the probability of uh, increasing the cycle time of the call goes up so let us go to minitab and see how this works so i have data of cycle time and hold time in column c1 and c2 so for regression we will use fitted line plot 
and the path for that is stat regression fitted line plot. Under response Y, we will enter cycle time. Under predictor X, we will enter whole time. And we will click OK. R square adjusted value of this particular table should be greater than 65% to say that there is a strong correlation exists between cycle time and whole time. So in our case, it is 91.6%, which means that when my whole time will increase, my cycle time will also increase. So in order to control the cycle time of a call, I need to control the whole time on each of these calls. The next commonly used Lean Six Sigma tool is FMEA. And I already told you that FMEA stands for Failure Mode and Effect Analysis. Failure modes are the errors or defect in the process design or items, especially those that affect the customers and can be potential or actual. It means they could have already happened or there is a probability of these failure modes that they can happen in the future. The effect analysis refers to studying the consequences of these failures. So what we have to do, we have to identify the risk priority number in failure mode and effect analysis and how this RPN score can be calculated. It can be done with the help of this formula, which is multiplication of severity of the failure mode into occurrence of the failure mode into the detection, how well we are, we can able to detect. So when severity is high, which is 10 in case the, because of the failure mode, a customer or an employee could be injured. Occurrence is if it is more than once per day, the rating scale is 10 and it is reverse in case of detection. The more we are able to detect, lesser the score. So for example, we are able to, the defect is obvious and can be kept from affecting the customer. The rating scale is 1. If the defect caused by the failure mode is not detectable at all, the rating scale is 10. Let us take an example of an accounts payable process to understand how FMEA works. So in accounts payable process, the invoices are scanned and then they are being processed. So the potential failure mode is if the scanned copy of the invoice is not reaching on time. The potential effect of the failure is that there could be a delay in the payment. The severity of that would be 7. So why I am taking two cases because so the scanned copies of the invoices which are not reaching on time could be because of the two potential causes. So the first one is that there is a team in US, they are not able to finish work on time. And the second one is the server issue because of which the scanned copies were not able to be uploaded on the system. So when they check the occurrence, the rating scale of occurrence was 9 in case of US team not able to finish work on time and the server issue, the occurrence scale was 7. And there was no current control in both the cases, so the detection score was 10. Overall RPN score, multiplication of severity, occurrence and detection gives 630 and 490. The recommended action for the first one is that they need to create the SLA for US team and discuss dashboard on conference calls so that they are accountable for their actions. The responsibility was given to the general manager of accounts payable team and the action was taken. They, they created the SLA for the team and they upload 100% invoices daily on time. Now the new RPN score severity remains the same. Occurrence and detection scores have gone down and the overall RPN score is less than 100. So once this RPN score is less than 100, then that failure mode will not impact the process. And likewise, the RPN score for the second potential, which was server issue was also brought down to 63. So this was the last commonly used Six Sigma tool that we are going to learn in this video. So friends, thank you for watching this video. I hope you really like this. And if you like it, please share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next upcoming video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.